Hello everyone. So any day anyone can ask you to explain the Ansible workflow and they would not expect some layman language answer. So you need to be versed with some technical terms. Now Ansible the first term is a controller node. Now what controller node is is a node on which Ansible software is running. Well the preferred node for this is a Linux box. It can be a Red Hat, Debian or Ubuntu or anything other Unix flavor. Now if we come to the client, which is going to manage, which are also called manage host. Now they can be Unix or basically Windows, VMware, network devices. The list is very big. So Ansible take help of its configuration file that is ansible.cfg. Now it has some definitions or some parameter defined in INI format. And with the help of the parameters, Ansible used to make connection and deploy the stuff. Now, the first thing is it will identify which is a default transportation protocol. It can be SSH, Paramic, or WinRM, PYVM, or my, whatever uh, client uh, version is or the operating system is. It simply take care of that version. Now, it will try to connect to the remote host or you would say a managed host as a remote user. Now, the default tendency of Ansible is that if you have not defined any remote user, then the user with which you are running the Ansible, maybe it's it's of the Ansible or any other user as well. When it will make a connection to the client, it will connect with the same user. But still, you can also define a uh, def uh, required or custom user if you want in the configuration file. Again, uh, your remote user may or may not have enough rights to deploy this stuff on the client machine. So now you can also define a privilege escalation or a privilege method that would help you to become a specific super user which or a user which can perform the stuff on the client machines so here the become method can be helpful and become user would help you to become a specific user i would simply give an example that maybe ansible user would use a sudo to become root and execute some commands now what ansible do it will do not directly deploy the stuff and that is a very big misconception people think that the connection happened and now deployment start happening just like a magic no on the client machine ansible first create a temporary structure and inside the temporary structure it will try to validate whether the code which you are trying to deploy is viable or not if it's not then it's going to abort that giving you some errors but now if it's viable and it noticed that oh it is doable do you have enough stuff enough resources to deploy this execution then it will send a report to the controller node now controller node have the information that okay this pre-test or would say a dry run is working fine and in the same time if it finds the validation happened successfully it will automatically perform the actual implementation as well and then we would have some answers that, oh, this execution happened completely and you'll get a report on the controller node. So that is a basic mechanism what Ansible follows while connecting to a node and perform the implementations. Hopefully that helped you and clear the workflow how Ansible connect to the nodes and perform its stuff. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.